Hello all. Here's a few tips for blocking out a procedural environment in layout. A little look at the assets we're going to be using. So we have a ground plane which is 50 meters by 50 meters, 100 segments on the X and the Z. Now the surface I'm using is ground. For the road I'm using another simple box is 50 meters deep and a meter wide and 200 segments in the depth. So slightly more dense there as it will be deforming over the ground. Now an important thing to note is that I'm using the same surface as the ground. And in this third layer I'm just using a simple point centered at the origin. I'm going to be using the surface editor for the displacement and this way the control is saved within the object. More on that later. A couple of other elements, we've got a really basic tree here and we've also got a very simple low poly rock. I've given our objects some color so we can see what we're doing and I've also added an item shape to the surface reference. First little job will be to prep the displacements. So I'm gonna select the ground and the road, P for properties. Under primitives, I'm gonna select everything that's included and remove them. I'm gonna add modifier and I'm gonna add the surface displacement. And under both surface displacements, I'm gonna give them a distance of one meter. Okay, so that's all I need for those two. Now hopefully this is where the fun can begin. <laughs> let's turn on shaded solid and we'll turn the headlight on as well. So let's bring up the surface editor with F5 and open the nodes. Claps that, we're not interested in surfacing right now, but what we do need is a procedural node. So I'm gonna take the value out and plug that into the displacement. So let's take the scale up uh, 30 meters, now we'll see it's not really all that high. We set the surface displacement for the road and the ground to one, and we don't wanna keep jumping back and forth to that. So this is why I've used the value output from the procedural node. So all I have to do is type in something in the foreground, and I have control over the height. Now Lightwave's not short of procedural textures, you'll notice, so you can pick one that'll suit your needs. But I think I'm just gonna stick with the good old turbulence. You could spend your life faffing around with sliders or you could point it to a reference object. Now with a reference object, I'm gonna use that null or rather that point that was saved within the model, so surface reference. If we now select our surface reference object and move it around, uh, not a lot happens. Now I'm wondering if this is a bug because I'm sure it used to. You seem to have to select Studio Live for any live updates. So bear that in mind, especially when it comes to surfacing properly, because you'll need to turn that off for VPR. But anyway, so that's working for now. The only other step, perhaps it's a little bit too sensitive on here. So let's make that 30. So it's slightly more gradiated, gradiated, slightly more gra granular. <laughs> a nice thing about using one of these controller nulls as well is that not only can I translate it, I can rotate and also scale. Another addition to this is we need the world deform coordinates to be ticked. So when we move our road around, it'll follow the contours of that texture. So let's sort the uh, road out. Now what we find when we drag this around is it matches nicely the contours of the displacement. And if you wanted a nice straight road, all you really needed to do is just sort of move it into position. So let's reset all of that. How are we gonna displace this road? Well, we're gonna use some joints. So let's jump over to the setup tab and turn off the deformers. Road is selected, let's press equal sign. Uh, bone, that's fine. Move that to the front of our road. Now I'm just gonna do a quick clone of this. I've got the quick clone mapped to command D in my case. Uh, so it's not going to be a chain. I'm just going to select that bone and option D in my case. Move it there. Another one here. Three. And another one at the end. That should be plenty, I reckon. So let's highlight those and press R to rest. I want P to bring up their properties. And we don't want Z or Z axis bones. We want joints. We also want to untick this multiply strength by rest length because joints have a rest length of zero. 
So zero times anything won't give me any results at all. So let's untick that. A couple of extra steps. Now I deleted the bone modifier earlier, so I need to re-add that. Let's move it above the surface displacement. We will then go over and turn on the deformers. So back to the setup tab, turn the deformers back on. We should see now that we can move our bones around or our joints and it will follow nicely the terrain. Now, as you'll see, this fall off might not be what you want. So again, let's bring up the properties for the bones. A few fall off types to choose from here. Uh, you could either go extreme or a little softer. And I think obviously for this road, <laughs> softer is a bit better. So now there's a slight offset, which is annoying. So we could, so be careful not to move the Y axis there, but we can now move those and rotate them into place. The added bonus is we could also scale at various points along the path as well. We'll continue with the mechanics before we get into shaping the environment. So we'll add a nice road to this and perhaps a few trees. In Modeler, I'm gonna take our road displacement, copy that and paste it into a new object. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build us some hedgerows. Let's keep it really simple. Something like that will do for now. So I've subpatched it and let's select these two and let's just call this, I don't know, hedges. Okay, and invert that and let's call this road. Any old color for now. Okay, we'll name that under a new layer. Let's line this with trees, shall we? I'm gonna use an instance generator for these trees. I'm gonna add them to some polys. Create a box, just a flat box. Uh, and then I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna squash them down a little bit. This is basically to tell the instance generator that I want the instances to point in that direction. Although I will be changing it, so it's not necessarily important here. Anyway, let's select that and copy. Uh, let's go to edit, go for the paste tool, and then I'm just gonna right mouse click. Now I found a nice little trick um, is to firstly deselect that. T for the move tool, fall off, I want polygon. So without having to select anything, I can just drag these polys. This is easier in textured mode, so you can drag the surface rather than at a point. So let's say we're happy with that. Let's give it a surface and send it to layout. We're in layout. I've colored those two items green. Here they are hiding underneath uh, our terrain. Okay, so super simple. I'm gonna select the road and I'm gonna hit P for properties. Then I'm gonna to go to nodal displacement, double click on that. And I'm gonna search for Metalink, which looks like I already have. Double click on there, link to. Now I'm gonna link that to our low poly road, which is this one here. And I'm just gonna connect that up. Straight away that's done what we want it to. Ah, but as you can see, we've got a little bit of pass through here. So let's go to our low poly road and we'll turn that off because we don't need to see that. We'll turn it off from the renderer as well because it doesn't need to render. There's still a little bit of pass through with the ground. So with the road selected, let's just go to the Y and move it, move it up just a little bit. There we go. So that's nice and clean. Let's move on to the tree placement. We need them to do two things. Firstly, is to follow the contour of the ground, obviously, and the second is to follow the path of the road. Now I could go back to the road and copy and paste Metalink from there onto the tree placement, but I find I have updating issues if I'm moving elements around in Modeler. So instead, I'm just gonna copy the terrain displacement onto the tree placement, if that makes sense. So F5, ground selected, copy, tree placement, paste. Not much has changed because if you remember, I have to add a surface displacement. So it's the surface displacement of one. That's the first step, it's following the terrain. Now it needs to follow the road. So under the bones here, let's double click on that to bring up the properties. Use bones from object and we want it to point to the road. So if we close that down and let's select a bone in the road. Now if you come across that, it's, again, it's that studio live update thing that needs clicking. So if we now change that, everything will move accordingly. So let's add the tree, hide the tree, 
turn it off the render. Let's go to instance generator on the tree placement. Instance generator, let's add the tree. Let's turn that on so we can see it. We want the type to be polygons, maximum polygons. Let's randomize the rotations a little bit. And perhaps some of the scale as well. Now all is looking good here. There's a couple I want a bit closer. It's F12. So F12 gets me to layout. Now I have my sync to layout key mapped to the asterisk in this case. I can make a few changes and hit the asterisk key and see the updates. So let's turn off the uh, tree placement from the render uh, and we'll also hide. Now you can't hide it because it turns off the instances so you just have to put it on vertices or bounding box, one of those two. We'll also drop these trees down a little bit so they're definitely not hanging in thin air. Finally, let's add some rocks. So there's my rock in the middle of the scene. Let's turn that off. Okay, select the ground, P for properties, instance generator, add the instance generator. Uh, and then on the instance generator, we want to add the rock. Select that. We want a surface, which will be the ground. And then let's crank this up to something like 3000 to begin with. All good, but we don't want them everywhere. Create a new null, uh, rock proximity. Okay, there it is there. Let's move it across a little bit. So let's keep this simple. Uh, so the instance generator under weights, click the texture button. We want to go for a gradient. So gradient and then input parameter. We want to go from distance to object and then select this rock proximity null. So let's move, let's give ourselves a bit more space and let's make the value zero. In fact, what we'll do as well is we'll give it a step. There we go. So we can now move that, move that about. Okay, we will need Studio Live for that. Okay, so there we go. That's working nicely. So let's duplicate this null, move it over here. So let's go back to this here. We'll go we'll copy, let's copy the current layer, and then we'll paste, add to layers. Now here, it's still pointing to that one, but we want it to point to the new one. So rocks proximity two. That's good, but it's overwritten that one. So we need to blend mode, add. So there we go. That's another one. Paste, replace, not replace, add. There we go, proximity three. Add, make sure it's on the ground, that might help. There we go. Perhaps an even bigger distance there. Actually, I know what we could try as well. Let's move the that null. Let's move all these above the surface like that. I should have done this first, really. Anyway, so uh, motion options, nodal motion. Raycast geometry. Double click on that, and then we're just going to select ground. And then what we should find if we connect in. Yes, OK. This will keep these nulls pinned to the ground when we change the, uh, the surface terrain. So let's copy that and paste it to the two remaining nulls. Paste, okay, so they've both dropped down onto the ground. So that's effectively it. Play around with your different textures, different layouts, move your roads about, move your plants about, <laughs> move your rocks about, move it all about until you find something you're happy with. I hope that was of use.